Hello everybody, Shocker to 1000 and reporting for duty. Welcome to a brand new Let's Play on a brand new series for the channel. <clears throat> it's a basically a short title as you can basically see on the screen right now with all the moving flowers and something. It's Pikmin. This game I wanted to play as a Let's Play on my channel literally three years ago and I just never came around to doing it because I had other games being released that I just felt like oh I actually want to play that that more frequently because I had Pikmin 1 and 2 for the Nintendo Wii um, ever since I first heard about the game um, long back in the year of 2016 and I was like thinking, when would be the perfect chance for me to do a proper let's play of this game? And I just could not think of it. But anyway. Um, we're going to be going straight into a new game here. <coughs> so. My commentary might not be the greatest in the world when it comes to this game. But I'm going to try my hardest as best as I honestly can. Doesn't really help the fact that you can actually see my uh, silhouette in the TV screen because of the light. Hang on. There you are. That's a bit better. So as you can see... A spaceship flying into the sky, into the space, getting hit by a meteorite. And crash lands. As we make it to the impact site. My name is Captain Olimar. While travelling through space, my ship was struck by a meteor. I must have blacked out. And I awoke on the surface of a weird planet. With so many parts lost, the sceptical hull of my beloved dolphin is a painful sight. The engine is gone. I'm stranded. To make matters worse, my atmospheric sensors indicate the planet's environment contains high levels of poisonous oxygen. My life support systems can function for only 30 days. If I can't repair the dolphin by then, no. Better not, better not to think about it. I must find the missing ship bars. I cannot do the voice reenactment that Proton John did when he did a blind let's play of this game. Honestly... When it comes to him with his voice reenactment, he's actually really good at it. So basically the whole definition of this, this is Captain Olimar. And Trevor Conroy knows the true definition about Olimar because it's known as Oimar, Ario, basically referencing to Mario or something. I don't know the full detail about it, but if any detail you want to know about, it'll more likely be him talking. So left thumbstick is obviously to move. Uh, you can move the camera with the right thumbstick, I think, yeah, um, we got X, which is indicating the whistle, A is the punch, oh, you can also use B to, oh, I shouldn't have said, um, X is one command, B is the whistle, but obviously, uh, the said, I'm playing this on the Nintendo Switch, because when I found out that you could actually download Pikmin 1, 2, and 3 in the eShop, I had to get it. Which, I would honestly say, Pikmin 3 Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch, a little bit hard to get used to when I play, when I played the game on the Wii U, for goodness knows how long. But anyway, 
We are technically stuck with this camera angle for a little bit. So, don't worry, because it's not going to stay like that for too long. A strange thing had appeared before me. I had hardly begun my search when it reared up as if, if it was waiting for me. It then dropped a single seed. What is it? Is it alive? Is it a machine? It resembles a vegetable of my home planet that I call an onion. I shall call this an onion too. And now the camera has zoomed out. If you actually push down on the right thumbstick you get an overhead view. Up, it will just lower it down to this angle. Um, oh, right. If you push set R, you got zoom in, standard zoom, zoom out. The best camera angle for you to have is basically this angle, so that way you can basically see all around. Because if you're too far out like this, you can see things from a mile away, but it's kind of hard to, to aim your cursor around from where um, you want to do certain stuff. The reason, obviously, I would be picking this up a lot sooner, but the reason why I'm actually, you know, I might as well. The seed that the onion dropped looked, uh, took root in the soil and is now produced an adorable little sprout. This sprout emits a strange light and it sways back and forth without benefit of wind. I cannot help but think it is calling to me. I am compelled. I must approach it and press A. And there's the introduction of Pikmin. Extraordinary! When I plucked the sprout, it turned out to be a living creature, not a plant. Thinking it has done no visible damage, it just stands there staring at me. Its shape is similar to the pick pick brown carrots I love so much. I believe, I believe I shall call it a Pikmin. Here I am stranded on a toxic planet fighting to survive and yet I'm intrigued. I must research this fascinating creature. I shall try and grab it and throw it with A. And I will call it to my side with B. Hmm. Perhaps it will react to pressing X or moving the right stick while holding L as well. If you're wondering what that means, you'll find that in due time. The following controls appear to allow me to severe to, to several viewpoints. Set L, snap camera behind Olimar. Right stick, left and right, rotate the camera. Set R, zoom. I probably said set R for the uh, R stick, I'll say. R stick up and down, change perspective. I must survive. I need to familiarize myself with these controls and my surroundings. Now, the way you had this uh, game actually get the ciphers, you can hold the Pikmin with the A, but this cursor can only go out this far every time. If you was if you was playing this on the Wii version, that red triangle will actually be the marker of where you are pointing your Wii remote. However, the Okay, uh, but, but the cursor that's on the floor is actually the true throwing angle of where the Pikmin can be thrown. So you can have a benefit of using the Wii Remote, but sometimes motion control can be a little bit awkward to get used to. What does this Pikmin think of me? I must observe his reactions. The more things I try, the more reactions I can catalogue. I shall attempt to grab and throw it with... Oh, it's just reminding me how to, like, control the Pikmin. Okay, never mind. So, these. Uh, there are basically different creature names in this air in this game. I can't properly pronounce every one of them. But that is a pellet posy. You throw a Pikmin at these pellet posies and it will result in tasking the Pikmin to carry it back to their home base of the Onion. 
because this is a red pellet posy, taking it to a red onion will double the benefits of what pigment you can draw out of it. Astonishing! The onion has sown more seeds. The small red pellet the pigment harvested after cutting down a flower appears to be some type of food that can pro uh, propagate the more pigment. The onion seems to be a sort of incubator. Needless to say, I must study this strange life form more. Now, a little other benefit with this. We do not have a prolonged time limit with this day, so you can basically stay here for as long as you want. I highly recommend these Pikmin, you keep them planted in the ground for as long as possible. But one thing that I will definitely say is this. Um, you will find out the reason why in due time. So, I'm not going to say anything too soon. But, give it a moment. It will happen. But, one thing I definitely will say with these Pikmin is to indicate sometimes how stupid the Pikmin can be. And I'm probably going to do this. Um, if you actually... Oh! Holding L and pointing the right thumbs is actually like guidance. Okay. You can turn motion control on and off if you wish, if you're playing on the Switch version, which I'm actually going to do. Because... Uh, actually... Is it... Yeah, it's definitely on. Oh, there we go. Okay, I have to hold the A button. So if you if you want to do like motion control, you can basically do it with the Pro Controller. However, if you want to like reset it, just let go of the A button, it will just automatically defaultly go straight back to where Olimar is facing in this exact distance. So see here, that's the farthest we can throw a Pikmin. To cancel out on you wanting to throw a Pikmin, just push the B button and it'll just drop down in place. So... Um, I can't really think what would be like beneficially worthwhile to explain about Pikmin. Because it's basically like, okay, you do get told stuff on the fly. But only when you have, like, discovered it kind of thing. So it's basically like, unless something happens, you will not get told anything about it. Over there, you can actually see one of the ship parts we need to pick up. So, oh, oh, here we go. So these two Pikmin over here, you notice they change from yellow, I say no, yellow, green leaves to a petal head. That is the definition about how long it will take for these Pikmin to be stayed in the ground for. You can instantly pick them up to be leaf Pikmin, but the longer they stay in the ground, this will happen. They will start growing flowers. This is the second stage for the Pikmin to be at. The third stage is when the flower head opens up. When that happens, the Pikmin will be able to move more faster, to be able to catch up with you more frequently, and you will not have any issue with any stragglers. And speaking of stragglers, that is the one thing that I definitely do want to say in relation to this game. You have to basically babysit these Pikmin. And the reason why you need to babysit the Pikmin go as followed. They love the sound of Olimar's whistle and they follow you because they want to learn the benefits of how to survive. If you leave one Pikmin out in the night time, they are gone for good. If you're fighting enemies in the game where they eat the Pikmin, they are gone for good. 
Yes, it is spoiling what's to be expected later on in the game, but to be honest, it's better to say it now than many, many minutes later on. So, okay, there's our first flower Pikmin. And you have to literally manually mash the A button every single time if you want to get all of these Pikmin out. If you like were to leave them in the ground overnight, they are not in danger. So you don't have... Uh, uh, why did Olimar do that? Did it take like a double input on my A button again? Because if it did, then I didn't really tell it to do that. And yet, this P Pikmin was actually going to be a flower head Pikmin. But obviously, the game just forced me to pick him up. So yeah, I'm going to let these two be flowers. And then I'm just going to pick the rest of them up. Because I don't want to be um, standing here all day trying to figure out what is worthwhile to talk about. Because it can be a bit redundant in thinking... What would be the best thing to talk about while we're waiting? Because you do actually focus specifically on time. So you don't really want to have a day of like spending too long doing something. Uh, for God's sake. There we go. So this is the definition of a, with the Pikmin. You throw Pikmin into all life's problems and have them solve the issue for you. The Pikmin are curious as children. They form groups to perform tasks that would be impossible for an individual. A glimmer of hope has begun to shine in my heart. If I can make use of their skills. Perhaps I can fix my ship. I shall sum up all I've learned of Pikmin conduct. Approach and hold A to pick sprouts. You basically have to mash A, honestly. Press A to grab Pikmin. Release the throw. Press B to call them. X to dismiss. Right thumbstick while holding um, the left but uh, it's the L button. To command and control a group, you said L or up, down, left, and right on the right stick to control perspective. I shall record this in my computer and access it with plus. So yeah, this is what the um, said L and other stuff is. Amazing! There's no mistaking it. My ship's engine rests before my very eyes. By a stroke of pure luck, I have already stumbled upon the most important piece of my damaged craft. Fate has smiled upon me, but how will I get it back to the dolphin? Well, as it goes as follows. We want to basically raise the Pikmin population as much as we possibly can. Believe me, it is worth your while. Because you obviously noticed when you saw one of my save files, it indicated the concept of... Um, how many Pikmin you actually grew and that kind of stuff, but it also tracks other stuff as well. And in case you're wondering, if you want a Pikmin to travel faster, you can put on more Pikmin than you are basically entitled to put on. So like with this one, you can put like double the amount. So like by default, you need at least five Pikmin to carry this. But ten maximum can carry it at once. When many Pikmin seeds sprout at once, 
I find it rather tedious to pluck them from the ground individually. My wife always told me I was no good at routine tasks. I guess I'll try to get it all done at once by holding A until I pick all the Pikmin from the ground. I've noticed that when I add Pikmin to my group, they become thrilled with excitement and flush with bright colour. At other times, they refer to a paler hue and give off a dim glow. This is actually a helpful tip. The brighter the colour the Pikmin are, the more likely that they'll be following you. If they are a dim colour, then that means that they've left the group. Oh, I actually does uh, do it with holding A. Okay, so I was wrong about that. Uh, wait. Oh, there's one more in the ground here. I was thinking, wait, where, where am I missing one? But you obviously notice that the camera instantly zooms in. We actually go towards the... Um, go underneath the onion. But honestly, what they're saying with this... As soon as you deliver that engine back to the dolphin, that is the automatic end of the day. And when you start day two, honestly, you do not want to come back here till like much later. Trust me on this. Because like, you can come back here to actually farm Pikmin if you wish, but it's a waste of a day if you do that. Wait, hang on. 23 are carrying the engine and they got a one with me. Where's the other one? So that's what the um, dim colour looks like of the Pikmin. Oh, glorious! With the help of these Pikmin, I've taken a huge step back towards home. My ship can once again lift off. The glimmer of hope is beginning to burn more brightly. But what has become of the remaining parts? That search starts tomorrow. And this is the cutscene that you will see every end of the day. Each day... I will go into further detail about in the next episode, okay? So next time on Pikmin, we are going to start off day two to search for the missing ship parts. We will see the ending plot before we start off the new day. One day since impact, I have somehow managed to launch the dolphin, but I was surprised to see the onion lift off with me. Perhaps the Pikmin cannot survive overnight on the planet's surface. Or have they merely decided to join me for other reasons? Either way, it seems they will help me again tomorrow. The dolphin is missing 29 pots. If I can't recover them all, I may never return home. To my family on planet Hokotate. Analysis shows life support systems will function for only 29 more days. How can I repair my dolphin in such a short time? A dense forest is visible on the surface below. As it holds the keys to my survival, I will name it the Forest of Hope. I will explore it tomorrow. And at the end of each day, it will keep a tally about the population of the Pikmin you grew, um, sprouted, lost in battle, and left behind. So, that's what we're going to do. See you guys in the next episode, guys. As we go to the Forest Naval. I say Forest of Hope. It's called the Forest no It's called the Forest Naval in a different Pikmin game, not this one. Sorry. Getting too into it. See you guys then.